here and this week I'm bringing you Royal Ascot in a vlog. We're going to talk dress codes, we're going to talk outfit ideas, do's, don'ts, all of that stuff. So let me know your thoughts on the blog by commenting below. Let me know if you're going to be coming. If you are, I expect you to pop in and see me on your route. And also, um, please do subscribe to our channel if you watch regularly. Um, do like our videos. All of these things help uh, when you're trying to grow a business. And we really do appreciate each and every single one of you guys watching. Um, so today on my Royal Ascot blog, what I thought I might do is run through my four rules of Ascot. For me, rule number one is start with the hat. Ascot is all about the hat. Go and see if you can find just the most exquisite piece that you possibly can afford in your budget and go for that. We've got loads of pieces here by really excellent milliners, world-renowned milliners in fact, for a fraction of the original cost and there's some really fun ideas coming up later in the blog. Rule number two for me at Royal Ascot is comfort and um, maybe that's just because I'm getting older but um, I would say make sure you're buying a hat that secures properly and wearing shoes that you can last in all day, failing that taking some flats to wear with because actually you will be outside probably for some of the day and if it's raining, if it's windy, you need to make sure that you're confident your hat or fascinator whatever you've got in your hair is going to stay there and stick there so uh, rule number two for me is comfort Rule number three for me, be prepared for the British weather. And that means rain or sunshine. I think it looks so elegant when you've actually thought ahead and prepared either sunglasses, which match your outfit, or an umbrella in the same hues as your dress and your hat. It just really does create uh, a beautiful picture when someone is finished to the nth degree. And my final rule, rule number four is, if you possibly can, do plan ahead. Make sure you've looked carefully at your ticket and you know exactly what enclosure you're going to be in. Uh, I'm gonna talk just briefly now for a minute or so on the different dress codes for each enclosure. And um, I've actually put all of this written down in the description below so you can just read through it at your leisure. So the strictest dress code, as you can probably imagine, is in the royal enclosure. And following that, the Queen Anne enclosure and the village enclosure have a slightly less strict dress code and finally the Windsor enclosure um, it doesn't necessarily have a dress code but I do always think it's really nice to go over and above for an occasion so uh, don't think that that's an excuse to be sloppy with your outfit choices. So let us start with the royal enclosure. The main idea is that you look really elegant and appropriate so if you're wearing a dress then you need to try and make sure your shoulders are covered or at least that you have um, an inch of strap there on your shoulder. And if you have a strappy dress, unfortunately, it's not a case of just putting a pashmina or something over the top. You really do need to make sure that the top of your dress adheres to the code. This year, for the first time ever, jumpsuits are allowed. That's 2017. And so are trouser suits as well in the Royal Enclosure. But you need to make sure that it's a matching suit. It's no good sort of having a jacket from this outfit and a trouser set from another outfit and mix and matching them together. Um, it does need to be a full set. There's no midriffs on show. Uh, the length of the dress needs to be appropriate, so that means knee length or below. There's no short skirts or anything like that. And in terms of your hat, you need to have at least a 10 centimeter base on your hat. Uh, let me show you what that refers to. So it means something like this, from here to here is your 10 centimeter base and bear with me uh, I'm back so actually a lot of people wouldn't necessarily realize that something like this is more than acceptable for the royal enclosure because from here to here which is your base is 10 centimeters however something like this would not be acceptable so hopefully that gives you a little idea of what you can and can't wear. And if we move into the Queen Anne and the village enclosure, uh, I would tend to try and adhere to the royal enclosure rules, but it is slightly less strict on the dress code. So strapless dresses are not allowed in these enclosures, but you would, for instance, be able to wear something like this on your head. So there's not such a strict 
code for the 10 centimetre. And you are, you are still required to wear something on your head. And again, make sure that the dress is of appropriate length. It's just about being appropriate, really. Don't see if you can push the rules as far as you possibly can and still get in. That's not really the idea. Finally, the Windsor enclosure. There are no formal guidelines, but I do think, you know, Royal Ascot is about the hats. It's about the fascinators. Why not just put one on and enjoy it? So without further ado, I thought I might give you um, some outfit ideas from my store. So here you can see that I've actually chosen to match up the colour of the hat to the dress. And to stop it being too overboard, I've then paired it with a neutral bag, which, and I've also paired it with neutral shoes. Let me adjust the camera so you can see. I always think if you are going for a bright colored dress and a bright colored hat, um, it can just be too much to really go all in one color. It's always really useful to have neutral colored accessories in wardrobe, so you don't really mind really spending out on them. Now a dress and a hat like this would be completely acceptable for the royal enclosure because you've got your shoulders covered, um, the dress is just below the knee, it's not too revealing, it's very demure. If, for instance, you're not in the royal enclosure, you're just attending, there's not as strict rules. You could perhaps, if it's a lovely summer day, match it up with this Dolce & Gabbana dress. I'm, I'll pop that on really quickly so you can get an idea. I've just taken um, some blues and greens from within this dress and matched up with the blues and greens that you can see in the hat here. Bear with. You let me up. Now, as I say, this is not acceptable for the royal enclosure, but if you are just in the Windsor enclosure, this is more than acceptable. You have a, a, a demure length dress, so it's just below the knee. I would also tend to match something like this with a really sweet little jacket, um, perhaps finishing here to tie in with the waistline. Again, what you're seeing here is a way of matching a really fun dress to a hat. For instance, I could actually choose something a little like this. By choosing to pick out another colour, it just gives you another option. Another tip would be don't shy away from black. A lot of people come in and they want beautiful bright coloured hats and outfits. I completely understand that it is a really fun day for going all out with what you're wearing. But um, don't actually avoid black, it can just look the most elegant on the day. Black enables you to really concentrate on the cut and the style of the accessories, dresses, whatever that you're wearing. So here you can see I've, um, I've paired that with a, a higher front low back dress which has got lace detail, uh, a Chanel bag and if you can see my shoes Le Boutons. Now, it might be slightly more understated than the bright blue that I was wearing before, but hopefully you agree it is equally as elegant. So here I chose this pink hat and I've actually um, picked one element of the hat to then pick up in the dress and that's one way of making sure that you combine. You don't need to match um, exactly as you can see. I've got um, a slightly different colour pink as to the pink of the dress but something that ties it in really nicely and I hope you're picking it up is the colour of the netting and that is perfectly matched to that of the dress and it means that it just ties in really subtly but really elegantly throughout the outfit. Again, just some nude shoes will work perfectly. 2017 is actually the first year that jumpsuits have made it on to the Royal Ascot Style Guide and jumpsuits are allowed as are trouser suits. I think it's a really stylish and fashion forward way to play Royal Ascot and it's also incredibly comfortable. My only thing that I would say about jumpsuits is make sure that you can get easily in and out of them because I've had a real night where the zip is completely down the back and you you have to enlist the help of a friend all day to get you in and out. This particular piece I've chosen to pair with a Stephen Jones creation. It's absolutely stunning. Something like this will have been bespoke made for one individual person. So it really is an absolutely exquisite piece to opt for for Royal Ascot and no one else will have the same. 
if you do shop in a shop like mine then you can get incredible one-off pieces by just the top milliners in the country for a fraction of their original cost and that means you're going to be the only one wearing that piece at Royal Ascot and it, it really will be a one-off. Something that would cost perhaps normally £600, you're going to be able to pick up for around 160 so it really is a very savvy way to shop. And you smiled over your shoulder For a minute I was stone cold sober I pulled you closer to my chest And you asked me to stay over